What's up, family? Welcome back to the channel, man. It's your boy, Mr. Wattot. Today, today, today. Hey, yo, skirt, 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 man. Check this out, yo. We got a video today. It's called Don't Be Sad. A lot knows. We're about to get into it now. Remember, if this is your first time on the channel. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and join the Wattot family. We are literally the latest family on YouTube. Ness, hey. In fact, also, before we get started, start it. Put a like on this video. Remember, if you got a video you want me to react to, get down in the comment section. Let me know, and I will get to it, man. Let's go ahead and get into this reaction, man. <laughs> Get into it. Soldier of Allah. In this world, you will never truly be happy. No matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, you will never truly be content. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. How could you feel worthless, my dear brothers? How could you feel worthless, my dear sisters? You're not the servant of Alat or Al Uzza or Isa or Krishna or Ganesh. You're not the servant of fashion or money or fame or beauty or power or position. You are the slave of Allah. Allah has chosen you from amongst the billions of human beings. Allah chose you and blessed you with Islam. Pain and suffering only becomes negative if it creates a barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it becomes positive. Pain becomes positive, a motivation for you when it brings you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Don't get stressed out, Muslims, over things that haven't happened yet. That's fear. And don't get stressed out over things that's already happened. Everything has been decreed. The most difficult pill for the Muslims to swallow is article number six of our deen, the Qadr of Allah. We don't want to admit it. We forget about the power of Allah. We forget about the presence of Allah. We forget that we came from a clot and we were nothing. Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to correct everything because we weren't doing anything right. And we get so afraid because we forget. We fear and we forget that Allah is in control. Surely we shall test each and every single one of you with a loss of wealth, with a loss of life, with a loss of profit and trade. So give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those when they are tested, they say to Allah we belong and to him we shall return. Upon those people are the blessings and prayers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, those are the ones who are truly guided. So if you have Allah, you have everything you desire. If you don't have Allah, nothing you desire will make you happy. Nothing. It'll all in the end bring you misery. Wallahi. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to dedicate this talk to every individual who was abandoned by their father, who has loved someone in this world, yet for one reason or another was left abandoned, who has lost someone to death and they couldn't figure out why. There are people across this world who are living in pain and agony, different types of pain, different types of agony. But it always comes down to the same conclusion that shaitan somehow or another finds a way to get the better of them and derails them from the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this lecture is dedicated to all of those individuals. We all have problems in our life, brothers and sisters. I and mean, that's the reality. Life is a test. We are going to be tested. 
Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think that you will be left alone saying you believe without being tested? Like those who came before you were tested? And even the prophets and those who were with them said, When will the help of Allah come? When will the help of Allah come? And then Allah says, the meaning of which is, Verily, the help of Allah is always near. SubhanAllah. So yes, we will be tested. There will be hardship. There will be difficulties. And that is the reality of life. And then you have to realize everything that's happening is from Allah. You know, you don't get depressed. If you forget about Allah, you end up getting depressed. You think things are black and they're gloomy. And do no, we don't believe this. We believe in happy endings. No matter how bleak it looks out there, it's dunya. You're in the lowest. Dunya means the lowest place. A dunya. We're on the bottom. There's only up from here. Really, there's only up. This place, wallahi, all of you, I'll give you sincere advice and myself. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. Mm. Trials and tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not just the calamities that strike us in terms of death, in terms of loss of wealth. But there are also blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And we don't use them in their appropriate means. If you are not being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do not see that test, then now is the time to realize that you're either being tested by pain or you're being tested by pleasure. They both need the exact same result. You turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is being tested by pain, he seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and finds a recourse out. The one who is being tested by pleasure, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings and he uses those blessings to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many wealthy people do you know that have a lot of wealth, who have children that are in tribulation, who have sons that are completely wayward or really look out there, people are in tribulation. You think you're looking at him because he has a big house, he has nice Mercedes. He, if you were in his shoes, you might say, I want to be back in my old shoes, yeah. even though they have holes in them. Because at least I can sleep at night. In his shoes, I have to take all these pills to go to sleep. When it comes to tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have one of two Now this is more significant when it comes to men because men naturally like to deal with their own pain. They don't like to speak about it. Women naturally like to speak about their pain and suffering and that's why their first reaction is going on the phone, going to see their mothers, going to see their friends. However, when it comes to true pain, at one time or another, you will try to isolate yourself. And this is the first thing you need to recognize that this is not what you want to do. This is not a natural reaction, but rather it is shaitan telling you that you will feel better when you're alone. Because really? you're the only one that understands what you're going through. It is a deception from shaitan. So while you may need to be alone for a little while, prolonged isolation is very harmful oh. and detrimental to your situation. What you want to do at that time is that short period of time, once you've gotten over that initial rage, that initial pain, then after that you need to get around the believers. You need to get around people who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah, he went through stressful moments. What was the solution that Allah gave his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him, Oh Muhammad, go and see psychologists and counselors so you could relieve your stress? Go on anti-depression tablets, get a high dosage of that. Because this is what happens these days. 
Not that I'm against it saying it's right or wrong. That's not my topic. But I'm saying that the best relief and the best cure and the best medicine for depression and stress is the one that Allah gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave to the entire ummah. So Allah azza wa jal gives him the cure and he says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ This is the cure. This is the medicine. Remember Allah Azza wa Jal and glorify Him. Prostrate to Allah and pray to Him. Continue worshipping the Lord until you meet your last moment in life. Woo! Amen. And this is what every individual who's going through pain and suffering needs to realize. That this point of pain and suffering is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you. But rather, this is a calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. And this is one of the wisdoms of trials and tribulations. That while we call each other on the phone, while we text message each other, the calling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes through trials and tribulations. And you can react one of two ways. Either you can deal with the pain at that moment and decide to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you can decide to just restrict that pain to yourself, not do anything about it, and then you'll see what it does to your deen. And this is the last stage of the cycle of isolation. That once you're isolated, you will see that eventually your deen starts to disappear. Mm. The content of your salah, the khushu on your salah, it disappears. Your ability to recite the Quran is no longer there. Your ability to fast during the day, it gets taken away. What did you do differently? What you did differently was you gave yourself into shaitan. And shaitan's promise is that he will lead you astray. He will lead you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in times of trials and tribulation, you need to seek out the believers. You need to seek out the righteous and let them be your guide and help to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody has their tribulations. And it's very rare, people that have happy time, wonderful life, all that, those people are rare. But Ibn Abbas said, the foundation of dunya is tribulation. The best worship is waiting for the ease from Allah to come when you're in hardship. So if Muslim would just have that perspective, they would realize that if I'm just patient here with all these tribulations, I'm in ibadah. You could just be sitting in your house. And if you're muhtasib with Allah, you're in ibadah. But if you're there complaining and woe is me and everything's horrible and it's doom and gloom and it's all black and it's all dark, Allah will give you more things to complain about. And He'll give you some real things to complain about because there's a hadith, if you complain about small calamities, Allah gives you great calamities. Remember that. The punishment of Allah is not out of anger and wrath. The punishment of Allah is a means of cleansing you of your sins. The punishment of Allah is a preparation that you can go into noblest and purest of places. Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends trials and tribulations. And that's why Ibn Abbas said that in every niqma there are three ni'mah. In every tribulation, there are three blessings. And the first one is that it could be worse than it is. That it's in your worldly matters and not in your deen. Like if you lose money, is money. But if you lose deen, you lost everything. Yeah. So that's a ni'mah. If it's, لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا. I mean, if you think about it, he didn't say, لا تصبنا. Do you see the dua? He didn't say, لا تصبنا يا الله. Don't give us any calamities. He said, لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا. Don't give us tribulation in our deen. We're going to get tribulation. And we know that. Because that's the nature of dunya. So you're going to get tribulation. But don't make it in deen. Make it in dunya. So that's a ni'mah. You lost your job. Alhamdulillah, I didn't miss my prayers. Alhamdulillah, I, I didn't lose my iman. Alhamdulillah, there's wudu and a place to pray. Because jobs come and go. But deen, once it's gone, Allahu Alam, if you'll ever get it back. 
And then the final one, it's in this world, it's fi dunya wa la fil akhirah. As long as the musibah is in this world, it's a ni'mah. Because the real musibah is the musibah in the next world. So if you look at that and realize we're in blessing, wallahi, the whole lot of us. Some may be more than others outwardly, more observable, but the whole ummah is in blessing, wallahi. Palestine, Kashmir, Shishan, everywhere. We're in ni'mah and you have to see it. You have to see it. Because we have, you know, the people of Kufar, they have no Lord. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as long as you have Allah, they can't take anything away from you. Everything you desire exists with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have Allah, you have everything you desire. If you don't have Allah, nothing you desire will make you happy. Nothing. It'll all in the end bring you misery. Wallahi. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. It is not a punishment from Allah, it's a calling from Allah that He wants you to come back to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not burden a soul more than it can bear. A lot of the times when we go through trials and tribulations, it feels that this trial is so great that there's no one being persecuted more than us at that given moment. But the reality of the situation is, that is not the case. There's always someone who is in a worse predicament than you. Now the situation is already as difficult as it is. You're going through a trial. Why make it worse by not being patient? Because you're only incurring the wrath of Allah. And an individual who's patient and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. They get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends off the verse by saying, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُحْتَدُونَ That they are the ones who are truly guided. When you are stressed, remember Allah Azza wa Jal. When you are depressed, pray to Allah Azza wa Jal and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to relieve your stress. Yes. When you are so worried, during your moment of stress, say Subhanallah. 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 Why is it when someone gets angry, they will utter with every single word that comes across their mind except saying Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know why? Because the moment they say Subhanallah, they will calm down. Subhanallah. 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 The close servants to Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no fear on them and there is no sadness for them. What's the point of having all the money of this dunya? and the luxury of this world, and the comfort of this world, and the strength and the power and the influence and the influence that anyone that can obtain in this world, and Allah is not happy from you, what's the point of it? What's the point? Of course you're sad. Of course you're sad. You are sad because Allah is not happy from you. Please Allah, Allah will make you happy. But you want to commit the sins during the day and night, and you want to be happy, and Allah is happy from you, that's impossible. You want to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal and you want Allah to make you happy in return, that will never happen. You want to fall into the haram and you want Allah Azza wa Jal to make you happy, that will never happen. No. And that's why my brother and sister, when you are sad and depressed, ask yourself that question. Before you look into your bank account, how much money you've got there. And before you make an appointment with a psychologist or a doctor, and before you see and speak to this person, that person, ask yourself, what's your relationship between you and Allah Azza wa Jal? Because of that relationship, you are sad. Because of your tongue being dry from not remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, you are sad. 
Wallahi, from the moment you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the moment you knock on the gate of Allah azza wa jalla and pray to Him, you feel the taste of happiness in your heart. Because darkness in the heart brings sadness. Darkness in the heart brings sadness. Darkness in the heart brings depression. Darkness in the heart brings stress. But light and nur brings happiness. Light and nur brings comfort. Light and nur brings calmness and tranquility. We have the wrong understanding of comfort and tranquility. We think that money is happiness. We think that power is happiness. Wallahi, Allah knows no one is happy with just money. And no one is just happy with fame. You hear every single day, the richest people commit suicide. Why? The most famous people on drugs. Why? Why? If they were happy, why do they go on drugs for? I don't know. I don't know. If they were happy with the money they had, why do they commit suicide for? I don't know. Dunya is their worry. Dunya is their stress. The world. Dunya is their concern. The world. But subhanallah, you're a mu'min, you're a believer. That's your concern every single day is how to please Allah Azza wa Jal. You sleep the best sleep. You wake up the best. You eat the best. Your heart is the best. Your comfort is the best. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When you please Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah puts happiness in your heart. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes you content. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal will bring you satisfaction. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you from amongst those who is happy. Allah will relieve your stress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away your depression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you concerned. And matters are worthy to be concerned. Wallahi, yes, there are moments that we are stressed. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, our only way of happiness and relieving stress from us is to please, to please Allah Azza wa Jalla. Turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah will turn to you. Be with Allah, and Allah will be, will be with you. Do the righteous deeds and actions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you happiness. If you are stressed, fear Allah azza wa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an opening for you. If you are stuck in a problem, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa will take you out of that problem. If you are depressed, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa will make an opening for you out of that depression. Yes. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've got everything. Rely on Allah Azza wa Jalla and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will give you everything. Rely on Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and Allah Azza wa Jalla will grant you everything. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if any of you is ever tried by a tribulation, then let him remember his trial and tribulation through my calamity. For indeed, it is the greatest of trials. What is happening here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alluding to the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the greatest trial that every Muslim goes through without even realizing it. And let's look at why. You look at the status of the Prophet ﷺ, he was every man's best friend. So people lost their best friends. People lost their consolers. The wives of the Prophet lost their husband. The Muslim community lost their leader. The old women in the community who had no one to tell their problems to, they used to tell it to the Messenger of Allah, they lost the ones who would hear them out. Now imagine the greatest of all trials. The Prophet ﷺ was our direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ was our direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In times of trials and tribulation, you have a decision to make. Either you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is your way to paradise. Or you can decide to live with your pain, seek the pity of people, and let the pain get worse 
and create your own destruction. He who has Allah has everything. That's true. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates the pain of every believer and of every Muslim and that he makes it a path to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than a path that leads away from him. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you are in a very good state now. And I hope that you have um, high Iman. I want to tell you don't ever be sad. Because Allah is with you. This life is not worth, worth of being sad. So you should always smile. Even sometimes you feel upset. I also feel upset a lot of times. Because I really just want to go home to Jenny. And I want to listen to good and I want to read Quran all day. If you ever feel sad, you should just go do the Jude. And you should remember that you are from the Muslim Ummah. That means that everyone is making da'a for you, including me. So just keep your head high and be strong. Because because after hardship is ease. Just like Allah promised in the Quran. When you feel sad, remember this life is just a test. And soon it will be over. And you'll be happy forever in Jenny. You won't be sad. Everything that's meant to happen to you, Allah wanted it to happen to you. So be happy for that. Don't be sad. You're Muslim and Allah loves you. So love him back. I know I'm just a little girl. But please listen to me when I talk. When you get to Jenny, you won't even remember these times. And um, when something bad happens to you or you get hurt, Allah will take the bad things away. Inshallah, you'll find your way. Sorry about that. Sometimes Allah tests us with hardships, but Allah tests the people that He loves. So He loves you, and I love you too so much. I hope this made you happy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. SubhanAllah, man! Well, to our family, get down in the comment section, man. Let me know what you think about this. Like, let me know what you think about this. And also, if you got a video you want me to react to, get down in the comment section, post a link, and I will get to it. Well, to our family, let's go ahead and say it all together, okay? We're going to say subhanAllah as loud as you can. We're going to say it. I'm going to say one, two, three, subhanAllah, okay? Well, to our family, ready? Let's go ahead and do it. One, two, three, subhanAllah. One more time. One, two, three. Three, subhanallah. One more time. Say it with your chest. One, two, three, subhanallah, man. Woo. Man, this was some good. This was, this was very, very, this was a good video. Oh, my God. This was a good video. Well, talk family, y'all know one thing that I've been going through, like, within the past, like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Within the past couple of months, I've been feeling so down because, honestly, I be feeling like, I be feeling like I'm not supposed to be the one on this channel with you guys. I feel like it's supposed to be somebody else that's more pure. I, sometimes I feel like, because when I say more pure, like I mean somebody that like, that has more knowledge. Because I feel like for me, I feel like the only thing I'm doing is just, I'm just trying to learn. And I feel like, I feel like there, there should be somebody else better. Somebody else better with a, with a, with a more clean, with a more clean heart, with a more clean background. Because... To me, I, I don't even feel like I'm, I'm, I'm that person. I don't even feel like I'm the right person for this channel. Like, and then sometimes I'll be wondering, like, why, why, did, why, did, God, why, why did God bless me with this? Like, like, the, like the video was saying, it's billions of people. There's billions of people that could have done this. Why me? Why, why did God choose me? Why me? Why me? That's why I'll be wondering sometimes when I, when, I, when, I, when I be on this channel. I'll be like, why? Like, 
Why me? Out of anybody else, why me? Why couldn't it be me on the other side? Why couldn't it be me watching somebody else? Why why I couldn't be the person watching somebody else video? Like 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 when I be on YouTube and I be like watching other people, you know, other people that are like really really good Islamic leaders. Like when I be watching their videos, why can't it be me on the other end watching them? Why is it the other way around? Why did why did God pick me? To, why did God pick me to do this? Like I, sometimes I be wondering, like why why me? But then I have to understand that people are chosen. God doesn't make mistakes. God does not make mistakes. So if if God chose me to do this, this is my calling. This is what I have to do, and that's one thing that I had to come to a realization, like with Twa. This is this is from God. This is what God wanted you to do. So don't be upset. God seen God seen how your life was going. You were going out every weekend. You was getting turned up every weekend. You was turning up. You you left everything. You left school. You left you was just out lost in the world. Lost. God said no. He said no, my child. I have a bigger plan for you. I want you to I want you to bring everyone together. I want you to stop to stop some of this hatred, to be able to build a family. And you're going to call it the Watwa family. Sometimes I'll be sitting here with like Watwa, let me let me Watwa family, let me talk to you guys real quick like like forget all of this cameras and stuff like that. Let me just talk to you guys real quick. I honestly be feeling like why me? Why? Like why 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 me? Like who am I? Out of everybody in the world, who am I? And then like like I said before, like you 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 can't question God's doing. You can't question it. When it's meant to happen, it's meant to happen. I just don't understand. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, it's my family, like like it should be somebody else, but then it's like why could why would it be somebody else when it can be you, Mr. Watwa is you? And then I'd be looking like the love. If it, if like if it wasn't supposed to be me, then it, it, the love wouldn't be there. Watwa family, y'all know like like there'll be times where I'll be like I'll be just out like okay like like this this week that just passed like y'all know school. Oh my gosh, this is this is good. Today is to um. Okay, school started last week. Y'all know on the second day of school when I went, uh, university, when I, when I went, <laughs> oh my God, do y'all know it was like three people that walked up to me separate times and they were like, most of them were like, aren't you that guy for YouTube or, uh, or, or aren't you Mr. Watwa? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my God. It was like, yo, yo, dude, do you know, like, he's like, do you know your channel? Like, bro, like. I be feeling so sad. They, uh, what he said? He said. He said. He said, "Bro, I be feeling so sad, and like, I'll be like going through the day, and then as soon as I get the notification, I go, I, I click on your video, bro, and like, I be getting like, I, 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 like my life, like the day just be uplifted, like, bro, I be feeling so good afterwards, like, like I'll be feeling down, and then after I watch your video, out of nowhere, I be feeling good, like." I be feeling like, you no, know, let me not be sad. Let me go on throughout my day. And I'm like, bro, are you serious? He's like, yeah. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just like, to me, I'm just like, because, you know, I had my book bag on. Like, I'm, I'm like, I was late to class. But at the end of the day, it didn't even matter because I wanted to talk to this. I wanted to talk to this brother. And he was like, yo, he was like, man, I really felt by myself. And I was like, you don't have any family? And he was like, no, nah, I have family. But he's like. He was just, basically what he was saying was he didn't have, like, a friend that was another religion. All his friends was, like, the same religion. So he didn't have another friend that was another religion. And he was like, he was like, when he found out about the Watwa family, he was like, he felt, he felt like he, 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 he was able to find another family. He was like, yo, you know, I've been in the comment section. He's like, I made friends in the Watwa family members. I was like, you made friends in the Watwa family? He's like, yeah, like, we're, we're on Instagram. Every time, like, you post a video, like, we'll talk about it. Like, we'll call each other up. I'm like, yo, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He's like, you don't know what you be doing? I was like, no, I didn't know. He was like, bro, you are literally uniting different people from different backgrounds together, different religions together. Like, 
And he was like, man, he's like, um, <clears throat> he was like, I never had like a friend that was another religion. I was like, yo, this is weird. Like, this is, this is like, cause to me, I'm like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm so used to like being in front of the camera that I've never really heard what the people say in real life. And it, 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 it was like, it, it. It made me feel so good. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. You know I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see you on Tuesday, bro. I'm gonna see you on Tuesday. But uh, he he was like, bro, if you if you, he's like, if you say this in a video, don't say my name. But bro, like, bro, you really touched me, bro. And like, honestly, I was feeling sad, and I didn't even know what I was gonna do. And you helped me. Like, you helped me. Like feel better about myself because as soon as i got to class bro like i was so happy i sat in front of the class i sat in the front of the class bro <laughs> like i don't never sit in the front of the class man i sit in the back or i sit like maybe in the middle i sat in the front of the class bro i was like so happy and i felt so good and i was like i was like yo twy you're doing good bro like keep going there's people that are happy with what you're doing there's people that are excited about what you're doing there's people that love what you're doing <sighs> and i was just like I was just like, wow, man, like, like, this is a blessing, this is a blessing, man, well, to our family, always remember that this life, honestly, this life, like they were saying in the video, this life, there was, there would be no way for you to be 100% happy. One thing I noticed, and the way you can understand that is, check this out. Have you ever wanted something so bad and then got it, and then the happiness didn't even last that long? Like, let's say, like, with a car. You wanted the car so bad, and you probably got the car, right? And then after you got the car, within a couple of months, they made a new car or a newer version of your car. Now you don't even want that car anymore. Why? Because the other car has... Uh, FM, I mean, not XM, uh, XM radio, and it has massage chairs, and it has all this new stuff, and it just makes your car feel old, right? Or you wanted like a new game, like, oh, for all my young Wattwa family members, this is a perfect example Fortnite. Everybody was on Fortnite. Everybody was like, yo, get on Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. As soon as you got on Fortnite, you started playing. After like maybe a month or two, all of a sudden, Fortnite started getting boring, right? Now Fortnite is getting boring. Now, Fortnite, they're trying to add a whole bunch of other stuff to it. They got cars in it now. They want, I mean, it's going to get to the point that everybody's going to leave Fortnite. So that's the same thing about with life. Like, you'll be like, oh, I want all this money. Like, I want to have all this money. Then when you get that money, do you know it comes with so much problems? When you get that, that fame, it comes with so much problems. Like, right now, you can go to sleep and not have to worry about anything. You can literally... You can sleep and not have any worries. But once you get that fame and you're out there, all of a sudden you can't go to sleep. Why? Because people are attacking you. You're getting negativity everywhere you go. Yes, once you get that fame, there are going to be people that don't like what you're doing. You're going to get negativity. You're also going to get positivity as well. But then you're going to get people that are coming to you, not because they love you. They're coming to you because of what you can do for them. So now love is blinded by the fame. Love is blinded by the money. And once all of that is gone, is there really true love? You have to think about that. You have to think about that. That's one thing I, I realized. That a lot of people that come to me and the first thing they start talking about is, hey, can you promote my video? Hey, can you um, can you promote this clothing? Or hey, can you do... No! Because I know you wouldn't have asked me to do that if you didn't see the numbers of subscribers. That's what I mean with Twa family. You have to understand that the life you're living is the best. It might not seem. You might be looking on the TV and like, oh, I want to live like the Kardashians, or I want to live like Jay-Z and Beyonce, or I want to live like, uh, I don't know about this president, but the Obama. <laughs> but it comes, it comes with stress. And the kind of stress leads to taking certain medications that will, uh, that will have you ending your life. So it's why family, appreciate your life. Appreciate what you have going on. It might not sound like it. Like you might be looking at yourself like, oh, but Mr. Watwa, it's easy for you to say it. You got all them subscribers. Uh, you, you got all that. 
one thing y'all have to know is that all of that is just numbers. Once YouTube, if YouTube decides to close the account, then what? You see what I'm saying? Then what? So that's why I don't live on, oh, I have to have this many views. I have to have this many subscribers. Because if YouTube decides to just one day delete it, then what? What, what, do, you, what do you have to fall back on? your family the same thing goes with uh, fame once once you make that hit song and you become famous or once you get that movie role and you become famous or whatever you did to become famous after that ride that wave is gone then what what do you fall back on you fall back on your family you fall back on the people that actually loved you for who you are you fall back on the people that didn't care about your dollar or didn't care about your 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 fame. They didn't care about that. They they loved you for you. They wanted to hang around you for you, not for what you could do for them, but be, because they like you. They love you. They love your energy. They love who you are. They love your personality. Something about you makes them complete. This world was never built to make you completely happy. Remember that. This everything down here is a test for up there. So have fun, but also remember that anything you do, if you felt like it was a sin, make sure you repent. And then also make sure anything that you're doing, I know all of us are going to chase our dreams. We're going to chase it. We're going to chase it. Yes. I'm not telling you don't chase it. Chase your dreams. But remember, 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 don't go too far away from the Dean. Don't go too far away from your religion. No matter what religion you believe in, don't go too far away from it. I always remember to come back. If you do something that was bad, repent. Repent. We all, we all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. But I repent. I always ask God for forgiveness. I always ask God. And, I, and, and, and anytime I play, I always pray and thank him. I be asking God for so much stuff. And then when I actually see him do it, oh my gosh, I pray to him. I say, thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Watwa family, thank you so much, man. It's your boy, Mr. Watwa. I know it's a long video. I apologize. But remember, this is your first time on the channel. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and join the Watwa family. We are literally the latest family on YouTube, and that's a fact. Also, before you leave the channel, put a like on this video. Remember, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Why? Because I post videos every day. So please take care. Watwa family, I love you. So please, please, please take care. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to uh, uh, we're gonna turn up tomorrow, man. It's your boy, Mr. Watwa, man. See y'all tomorrow. Mwah! What?